language connects us to who we are and where we're from. And the, the beauty of our language for me is that, you know, we have a word for everything that we can feel, hear and see on our country. So everything has a word attached to it. We're teaching people about the connection to country and breaking that down into the words of the, the animals and, and the, the landscape that talks about that you have a responsibility of looking after a certain pocket. So what we modern day contemporarily call our, our totems. So what do you reckon that track is for a animal that we talked Snake. about? Snake! Yeah, nearly. Oh, I think a something that walks like this. Yeah. A heel Yeah, so you've got the, the footprints here, those dots, and their tail is the one that comes in behind them. And that's a goanna. Can you remember the word for goanna or anyone? Spot on, well done. You have a responsibility and an obligation of looking after each other and the stories, but for me, importantly, the country, because without people who don't manage the country, who don't look after it, we've seen what it already, the effect it can have on the environment. So when we talk about, you know, we had fire, people who had the knowledge on fire, water, trees, so we use bark and that sort of stuff for medicinal purposes or even hunting purposes for fish and stuff like that. So you have a certain knowledge holder who is a certain, I suppose, expert on that story. It's pretty much maintained sustainability here in Australia for over 40,000 years. So we must have had some really good systems in place that managed land, that looked after land, and it had rules and laws with it. And you had to have a good positive relationship. So if I can teach that to kids in everyday life stuff about, you know, when you go to school, there's rules. When you get a job, there's rules. So if you abide by the rules, everything just works out. Humility. Humility. So what does that mean again? That we're all the same We're all equal. equal. No one's better than somebody no, else. And even to the point, like I say, with our Aboriginal people, you're no better than that tree and that tree's no better than you because you're part of that. When you're in that circle, you're part of something. Kids are kids. These, this age group, I think from that um, probably eight to 13-ish, just engage in the art side of things. They love the storytelling. Um, and, and again, this is the best time to teach them because from the naught to five years of age, I think even to the eight, they, they just, they're sponges, they soak it up. And they have fun, they have innocence, so they're not judgmental on it. They, they engage with it, they ask questions, some, some, funny, some really funny questions at times. But they walk away going, I've learned something different about Aboriginal culture. I'm not hearing all that negative stuff about Aboriginal people. So if we can plant it here while they're young, but nurture that through the education system, like primary, secondary, even into the universities, we're just better off as a nation. Because people are just more educated, they're, better, they're more understanding to, to that. So I, I think it's important. Let's get them while they're young. Mbu. You've got to go Mbu. Mbuanda. 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 Mbuanda.